Hey, what's up, DIY? It's Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking furnaces today. In the event that your furnace only works or runs with no filter installed, that's a problem. We're going to talk about a couple common causes. DIYers, trust me, you do not want to run your furnace with no filter. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, inside the utility room, I'm going to hop to this side. As you see here, here is our Bryant furnace. And Bryant is under the carrier brand or umbrella. And for our filming, Anytime we're working on a furnace or filming videos on the furnace, I've got the main electrical switch to the down and off position, as well as the wall-mounted thermostat switch is no longer on heat, it is off. And common cause number one, we're going to hop to our filter. As you see here, that is where our filter is installed, just to the left of the main portion of the furnace, and just to the right or bottom portion of our section of our ductwork, that sucks in all the air from the upper wall or ceiling vents and brings the air down into here where it then enters in the system as it passes through the filter. Again, common cause number one is a dirty filter. In the event that you have not replaced your filter in a very long time, I highly recommend replacing that filter. And as you can see here, there is the size 16 by 20 by one. Make sure you install the exact replacement size filter into your furnace to alleviate any future issues. So again, that's common cause number one, a dirty filter that needs to be replaced. Because long story short, a dirty filter will decrease the amount of airflow or ventilation through that filter and into the system. And guess what? The limit switch or sensor will pick up on that lack of ventilation or airflow and it will shut the system down. So again, dirty filter, replace that. Common cause number two, I want to show you, still talking about the filter, but the position of how the filter must be installed in your furnace. And I'm going to come all the way in here and right here, that little triangle icon, I'll zoom in on it. As you see here, that is an arrow and it says airflow and it is pointing directly to the larger portion of our furnace. And DIYers, that's important because if installed the wrong way, here is the back portion of the filter. And you can kind of see the cardboard grid protector on this portion of the filter, and it's not on the other side of the filter. So a quick explanation of how that filter is designed in regards to the position it needs to be installed in the furnace is... Down in here is your large blower motor and fan. And as that kicks on and spins and sucks all the air from this portion of the furnace and into this portion of the furnace, where it heats up the air and blows it out your entire ductwork and into your home to heat your home, that is a large amount of suction. And that cardboard looking grid protects the filter from being sucked out of its cardboard case here. So let me flop it to the other side. As you see here, there is no cardboard protector grid. So if I installed it like this, once that fan kicked on and the air was sucked in and through the filter, this portion of the filter would actually get pulled out of the cardboard and end up somewhere in this area where you do not want it to be. So again, airflow, as you see there, and that arrow must be pointing in the direction of the air that travels through the system and into the furnace. Let me set that aside. Also come down in here while you're in here. Double check everything is clear. In the event that you have a lot of debris in there, go ahead and vacuum that up. Get all that out of there. You don't want anything in there. Take a step back. I'm going to re-secure or insert the filter carefully. And you'll notice it fell into its gap or space pretty friendly and easily. And that's because the furnace is off. Long story short, do not change your filter or replace your filter with the furnace running. It's very hard to get that filter in place because again, the amount of suction being sucked into your system or generated by that blower fan and motor is pretty substantial. So again, that's common cause number two, the actual position of your air filter. So take a look at that. Make sure your air filter is installed and positioned properly. And I'm now going to come over here and this is a more high-end, more expensive filter by 3M, as you can see, 1500, 16 by 20 by one, same size filter as the old one. And long story short, this filter here is about $4.99 at my local Ace Hardware. And this filter, purchased at my local Ace Hardware as well, is about $21.99. So big difference in price. And let me show you the back end of this. And I bring this up because basically this is common cause number three in the event that you purchase a super high-end filter that really is too high-end and advanced for your system. Whether you believe it or not, that will obstruct the amount of airflow and ventilation coming through that little portion where the air filter is installed and into your system. So again, common cause number three, 
you have installed a way too high end and advanced filter that your system does not like. Try going back to a more standard and low end cost friendly filter that might actually fix your issue. Again, common cause number three. What we'll do now is move inside the furnace and we have this very long threaded screw into this portion here. Counterclockwise, I will unscrew that and I'm going to remove this cover panel. Pick it up, pull it back. It's top heavy, so I'll place it in a safe location. I've leaned the cover panel up in a way where it's not going to fall on the floor and damage itself. DLRs, check this out. We now have access to a lot of the internal moving parts of our furnace. And we are going to remove this panel. We've got a quarter inch screw there, one in the top right and top left. I want to show you the actual blower motor and fan behind that panel. And again, a lot of moving parts, our pressure switch, our inducer fan and motor, our gas valve. We'll talk more about that here shortly. I'll remove that panel and show you what's inside. With that panel removed, coming down below, we now have much better access to everything inside this lower compartment here, which includes our capacitor, our control panel or board, and all the wiring that feeds into it and our cutoff switch. That's important. In the event that that panel is not installed and secured properly to compress that switch, guess what? Your furnace will never turn on. So keep that in mind. Inside here is our blower motor and fan. And this entire oval rounded shaped aluminum unit houses the entire blower motor and fan inside there. Coming down below here, let me give you a good view. There is the filter as I just showed you. So again, it is very important that you install the filter properly where that cardboard grid design is facing your furnace. Let me scroll in just a little bit more, as you see there. Let me come to the back side, and there is our large blower motor and fan. A very dirty blower fan, and you can see some buildup there from dust or kind of ash soot looking debris. And unfortunately over time, DIYers, believe it or not, that weighs the fan down and puts extra stress on the motor itself, which again is right up here. And if that's the case, and your blower fan itself is extremely dirty and heavier than it is when brand new and clean, that will also make the system shut down or only run with the filter out of that little compartment there. Because long story short with that is again, once that's up and running, that is pulling in all the air from your ductwork. And if it's already heavy with debris and ash or dust buildup, it's already working overtime, and when you add that filter, it just might not be able to handle the added blockchain of protection of airflow as a filter is designed to do when installed and with the added weight of the fan blades. Again, it just won't be strong enough, so when you pull that filter out and open up that entire chamber for air to pass through, well, at that point, your blower motor and fan aren't working as hard as it is with that filter. So again, keep that in mind. And I know what you're thinking, how do I clean that? Really, DIYers, there's no easy way to do this. You basically have to remove this entire housing and pull it out, which can be done. Let's be honest, it definitely can be done. That is a DIY project. And then you need to vacuum up the internal portion of the fan to again, remove all of that dust buildup and lower the weight of those fan blades onto the system. While you're here, there's a lot of wires that feed into Phillips screws and connections. Make sure those are tight. Do not over tighten them but you definitely don't want them loose. I promise you that. Coming to this side, I do wanna show you how this is secured inside this compartment. You've got screws that secure the mount portion of this unit in place, and you unscrew those. And carefully come to the other side, do the same thing, and maneuver this out in a way where you do not damage any of the wiring. You'll also have to remove this screw right here, which you can pull this adjustable locking panel down to remove your capacitor, and again, pull that unit out to clean it. Coming back up top, I now want to shift our attention to our gas line and plumbing or pipe. Here is our shutoff valve. It's in the full open position and in line with the pipe. Feeding in to the left portion of our gas valve. As you can see, there is the arrow of flow. And common cause number five, a gas valve or feed set to a too high output. I'll set the camera down and talk more about that. 
I've repositioned the camera and again I want to talk more about the gas valve and you can see the toggle switch is positioned to the on position and if I want to turn it off I just carefully shift this toggle switch to the up and off position however we're not going to do that during this filming because again I want to talk about the gas feed or output so again, this is your gas valve regulator, and it regulates the amount of gas that comes out of the pipe and into the system. And on the back side here, you can see a black pipe that actually loops down and under and into this long bar here, where it then feeds the gas inside those burner chambers, where the igniter, which is right in here, can ignite, and the burner flames appear and are directed straight down and into their respective holes. So now that we have a basic understanding of the gas flow into the system and how it ignites, let's go back to the regulator or gas valve itself and DIYers, in the event that this is not properly adjusted for the gas feed into the system, or in other words, this regulator or gas valve is not properly managing the amount of gas into the system, whether it's too much gas or too little gas, well, unfortunately, your entire system will be affected, which leads us to our next common cause. In the event that this gas valve is adjusted to a setting where it's allowing too much gas into the system, your system will shut off when you have a filter installed. And honestly, DIYers, it is supposed to do that. That's how it's designed to protect your system from overheating and trying to take on too much gas to a point where it starts a fire inside your system. That is the last thing you want. Trust me. However, on the opposite end, in the event that I take that filter out, it may counterbalance the amount of gas flow or feed being sent into the system. And unfortunately, your furnace might just turn on and run without no issues. But again, that's not what you want. That could lead to all sorts of issues. So the next question you may have is how do I adjust the gas valve or feed into the system? And DIYers, if you do not know a lot about furnaces, nor have you worked on furnaces a lot in the past, we highly recommend contacting a professional HVAC technician where he or she can come out to the furnace and properly adjust that gas feed to its proper output, which again will alleviate all sorts of trouble. And in the end, you can have your furnace up and running with the filter installed. And again, that's how it's designed to work, right? So again, common cause number five, I just wanted to show you that. At this point, I've got everything put back together. The lower internal panel is secured. The outer and larger panel is properly positioned in place and secured. The filter itself is installed properly and shifted all the way into position, as well as positioned in a way where the arrow is facing the furnace itself, which again relates to the airflow. Comes down in this section, through the filter, and clean air into the system. And DORs, I will end by saying this, you never, ever, ever want to run your furnace without a filter or ever feel that it is okay to run your furnace without a filter. Because long story short, nothing but bad things will come of it, which include the furnace itself caking up with dust that shouldn't be inside your furnace, leading to overheating furnace and possible fire. And in addition, not to mention, in the event that you run your furnace long term without a filter, well, guess what? So again, do not run your furnace without a filter that would not be good. We hope this helps. Here's our pegboard. All of these parts are open. These are remaining parts and hardware from previous DIY videos. And then we've got our Craftsman shrine and wall. We love Craftsman tools. DIYers again. We hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Leaving the furnace room. Check this out, DIYers. This is my mom and dad's jet ski in the house. Wife approved. I've got the green light to do a bunch of DIY videos to the jet ski during the winter. Again, we hope this helped. Thanks again for watching.